bad conduct before this court, and I will take it up with okay. the state bar. The Supreme Court is going to bounce her on her head, just like the Court of Appeals did. This is Rivergate Healthcare Center versus Patricia Bouchard, case number 2200891 CZ. Council appearances for the record. Good morning, Your Honor. Tony Franzi is appearing for Patricia Bouchard. Good morning, Your Honor. Joseph Aviar is appearing on behalf of Rivergate Healthcare Center. Okay. Um, let's let's start with let's start with the stay, Ms. Franzi. Oh, wait, no. Oh, Mr. Ms. Barbers, did you file the motion for stay? Uh, this is our, our motion to dismiss, Your Honor. And my motion to stay, Your Honor, because there hasn't been a decision yet from the yeah, Supreme right, Court. Yeah, right, yeah. Right, right. I had it right, right first. I, 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 I'm happy to go ahead with the motion to dismiss, Your Honor. I don't think it should be okay. granted. Okay. Your Honor, um, this case was filed approximately 16 months ago. Uh, when I was retained back in uh, December and January, I served Ms. Francesi with interrogatories regarding her counterclaim. She refused to answer them. I had to get a court order to compel her to answer them. In April of this year... That's uh, not true, Your Honor. Wait, I, no, filed, okay. um, I filed a motion for our protective okay, order. Stop. Okay. Oh, you Your Honor, I can't let him keep lying into no, the record. But, but you, no, but you, you'll have an opportunity, but please just let him finish his presentation, Ms. Francie. Just make your notes so that you can respond appropriately when it's your turn. Mr. Thank Bavier. You. Your Honor, in April this year, I subpoenaed uh, the records of her uh, expert witness, uh, uh, Dr. N. Scott. Uh, she uh, refused to uh, uh, sign authorizations for the release of those records, so I filed a motion to preclude her from offering any documentary or testimonial evidence. Uh, the court finally uh, heard argument in that in October. In October 31st, the court ordered her to produce the report of her expert witness. Uh, she refused to. She filed a motion for reconsideration that was didn't raise anything new. It was a baseless motion. Then when you denied the motion, she filed a, a, a so-called emergency application uh, to the Court of Appeals, which is summarily denied. And Your Honor, I can tell you, I've been in practice for 38 years. I have never seen anyone appeal a, a trial court's order to compel production of a, an expert's report. That never happens. She has now filed an application to the Supreme Court uh, to have the Supreme Court say that you're, you, she doesn't have to compel her expert's report. And Your Honor, I guarantee you the Supreme Court is going to bounce her on her head, just like the Court of Appeals did. <sighs> And Your Honor, uh, if I may say, uh, so now you ordered this 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 report in, on October 31st. Five months have gone by, and I still don't have the report. She never, never filed a, a, a motion for stay of proceedings until after I filed this motion to dismiss. So, Your Honor, in addition to delay after delay after delay, she's frankly dishonest with the court. For example, in her, in her response to uh, my motion to dismiss on page six of her brief, she says Rivergate never subpoenaed uh, the records of Ms. N. Scott. That's not true. I subpoenaed them on April 26th. So she not only does she lie verbally, Your Honor, but she puts it in writing. And Your Honor, this is not the first time Ms. Francesi has engaged in this kind of behavior. In the case of Neff uh, versus Chapel Hill Condominium Association, the Michigan Court of Appeals found that Ms. Francesi uh, repeatedly failed to obey court orders. In the case of Rob uh, versus uh, Moon Lake Properties Owners Association, a federal court, a federal judge determined that not only had she lied to the court, uh, but that she had engaged in a pattern of vex vexatious and obstructive discovery and fined her, sanctioned her $214,000. Now, Judge, let me suggest, you've got to be a pretty bad actor to get a federal judge to sanction you $214,000. So she's been sanctioned by the federal courts. She's been sanctioned by the Michigan Court of Appeals for repeated failure to obey court orders. She's going to keep uh, delaying and filing motion after motion. That's what she does. She files vexatious and obstructive discovery. Uh, it's been documented, and I attach those opinions to my motion, Your Honor. I would encourage you to read them carefully. This lawyer has a problem with obeying court orders. It's almost like she has a mental block. And there is no basis for this case. The case, just like in the in the uh, the uh, uh, Rob versus Moon Lake case, her her counterclaim is groundless. 
She's engaged in a pattern of vexatious and obstructive discovery. She's going to keep on doing it. Your Honor, it's time to lower the boom on her. You ordered her to produce her expert's report. She flat out refuses to do, to, do so. Not only has she refused to obey your orders, she's lied right in your face. It's time to dismiss her case. Ms. Francesi. Your Honor, I will take up Mr. Baviar's bad conduct here with the state bar when it's appropriate. I will not waste this court's time with his baseless ad hominem, which has been repeated, which is demonstrably false. But I'm not going to waste the court's time because it's also a red herring in this case. So I will begin. As I may have alluded before, I provide care for elderly parents who loathe the notion of going to a nursing home. I think we can all agree they're not alone in those concerns. As it relates to seniors in general, in large part, the fear is warranted because the nursing home's profit motive is not consistent with their personal rights. This case exemplifies that inherent problem. But what Mr. Babiars is attempting to do here is he is attempting to, again, push the court away from the actual fatal flaw in his motion. It is at page 11 of my response. Rivergate admits that there is no claim or defense in this case that is dependent on that report. And the reason is, Your Honor, they're saying at the same time, we don't have this report and... They're saying, as a result of that, that there is no possibility that any of their conduct during their actions in 2022 could possibly have been dependent on the content of that report. How okay. Can, okay, let me ask so, you a question so I yes. can make sure that I'm recalling this correctly. You have a almost a thousand cases. This is a situation where they're alleging Ms. Bouchard owes for um, her stay at Rivergate, correct? Well, that's the complaint, Your Honor, but that's not what we're here about today. No, I, I, I asked you a question. I said, please refresh my memory that is so correct. that I can. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So um, in terms of the request for the um, extra, but you've, but I, the problem is, Ms. Francie, you listed this doctor as your expert, and I, and I'm going to say this, and then you clarify it and put me right if I'm wrong. Your expert is going to the expert report that your expert prepared is relative to the care and treatment of Ms. Bouchard, right? No, that's exactly what the problem is, Your Honor. Okay, tell me what it's for. Okay, so Your Honor, this report that he is looking for is a report, is an evaluation that's done because the, court, the probate court requested it and put it in its non-public document. In my brief, Your Honor, I go into great lengths about how what Mr. Bouchard is doing here, I mean, what Mr. Babiars is doing here, is he is engaging in a subterfuge to try to call this a medical record, to try to call this treatment records. It has not anything to do with treatment records, Your Honor. And I quoted the Michigan statute, which defines what is a medical, what is a medical or treatment record? And this is not one of those, Your Honor. He is absolutely wrong in every way. And because he's wrong in every way, he is attempting to malign me personally because of it. Your Honor, I'll point you to a couple other places in my brief. Right now at page three. The court has found questions of fact to be exist to be tried, which are not dependent on capacity, which is the subject of the evaluation. 
and it is in the court's public record, the probate court's non-public record, the capacity was determined by that court. It cannot be relitigated here. So that report is not relevant here. That's number one. Number two, the October 31st order is void because this court can't override the probate court. But this court's decision doesn't need to be dependent on whether or not that report is void. Okay. The, the, the order is void that says, give me that report. It's not dependent on that. That is one of the issues, but it's not dependent on that. The third thing is, Your Honor, that Rivergate failed to use at least six different ways, other ways, to have gotten the information that it sought, including the simplest thing over the last 18 months of simply filing a one-page form petition in the probate court say, saying, I need this report. May I have it? He didn't do that. And five other okay, things. Okay, wait, wait, stop, out. stop. Hold on, let me ask you this. You're saying that they're in the probate court if you're requesting something that is confidential, you can get relief from the probate court? Sure. Because he claims, in one respect, he claims that because they were a party in that case, that they can just override the subject matter jurisdiction and ask you to do it. Okay, wait. You're you're saying, let, me, let me make sure I'm, I'm understanding this. So you're saying Rivergate was involved in the probate matter? Is that what you're saying? Rivergate only filed the petition, but Rivergate never pursued its a petition. And it was dismissed on June 13th because they failed to provide the evidence they needed. Had they requested the court there, the, the report there, the, it would have only occurred if the court allowed a trial. They could not have gotten it unless there was a trial. But there's nothing preventing them now in 18 months from simply obviating this whole problem by having by filing a simple petition in the probate court, it's a one-page SCAO form that says, "Please, Miss uh, Your Honor, Judge Keith, may we please have a copy of this particular report that is part of your non-public record?" For eighteen months, instead of doing that, he has attempted to malign me personally. Okay, That's so silly, let, Your Honor. Let me, let me ask you this, and so I can understand because maybe I overlooked this. So you're saying that the the probate order, oh no, the probate report that was prepared was done so in the probate court to determine Ms. Bouchard's capacity? No, Your Honor. The way that report is produced, it is produced when there is a litigant that says to the probate court, I don't have the money to hire somebody. I'd like you to order a ind independent evaluation of my capacity. And then if I choose to use it in court, I can use it in court. Okay, and tell me tell me what you mean by capacity, because I think that's a term of art. What do you mean by capacity? Capacity is defined, Your Honor, in Section 700.1105 of the uh, estate and protected individuals code. I have cited it here many times and uh, it defines capacity. Capa capacity is capacity is not at issue in this case, Your no, Honor. No, just, just explain. I'm asking you to explain this well, to me. Okay, I don't do I'm, probate. Okay, so just I'm, for the record, what does capacity, because this is what you're saying this report was prepared for, right? Yeah, I'm going to look it up for you, Your Honor, because I can read it to the court right now. I don't th incapacitated individual is a Michigan law that defines an incapacitated individual who is someone who is impaired by reason of mental illness, mental deficiency, physical illness or disability, chronic use of drugs, chronic intoxication or other cause, not including minority, to the extent of lacking sufficient understanding or capacity to make or con communicate informed decisions. A legally incapacitated individual is an individual uh, other than a minor 
for whom a guardian is appointed under this act or an individual other than a minor who has been adjudged by a court to be an incapacitated individual. Your Honor, my client was never so adjudged. That's why it remains in the non-public record. The court dismissed the question of capacity, and that court has exclusive jurisdiction over that issue. This okay. court cannot get okay. into it. Okay, calm down. Your Honor, may I respond? No, hold on. No. I'm still trying to understand, Mr. Baviers. So, at some point in time, there was a petition in probate court file relative to Ms. Bouchard's capacity. Is that what you're saying? To yes. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. And the court, the probate court ordered this evaluation to be done relative to capacity. Is that and what you're saying? That's correct. And then, and, and unless it gets tried, unless the issue of capacity gets tried, it remains as a matter of law in that court's uh, non-public record. It remains there. It stays okay, non-public. Where is that? Where where is is that statutorily based or what? What's that based on? Uh, uh, it is, uh, Your Honor. I, I I filed it. So here, I I think I can find it really quickly, Your Honor. It's in my objections that were filed on uh, November six. I, I I am. I'm 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 gonna find it. I'll find it really quickly. Um, that it is in my objections that were, but it's also in several other places, Your Honor. That's just the last place I know it was filed. Um, and I believe it's actually the last, in fact, Your Honor, it is. It is the last exhibit in the exhibits that I filed for today's motion. And it says, and I quote, an inquiry should end with the state's non-public and limited access court records chart, which is available at the One Court of Justice website. At page 62, under subpart F, probate court, the chart makes Dr. Escott's report a non-public document. F5, guardianship for legally incapacitated individual, report to accompany initial petition. Uh, the report shall not be made a part of the public record. Report is available to the court or an appellate court in which the proceedings may be appealed. Those proceedings, the capacity proceedings. The court's response to inquiries made should be the accompanying report is non-public pursuant to statute. The report is to be available only to the alleged incapacitated individual, the petitioner, their attorneys, and to other individuals as the court directs the okay. court it's referring to is the probate court okay but let, let me back up see i i think what what she's saying is you said read that portion who it's available to again it's available to their attorneys and to other individuals as the court directs no you said something about petitioner and Read the first the report's part. available only to the alleged incapacitated individual, the petitioner, right. their attorneys, and the other indiv and other individuals as the court directs. So okay. as the court directs, speaks okay. to that court's exclusive jurisdiction to order it. Okay, and then you said that there's uh, what's the um, what's the 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 form, the probate form that an attorney can utilize oh I, I i don't know if i remember the the actual form but it's a piece it's an scao form pc something 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 it is called a petition in order and all he's got to do is fill that out and say i would like a copy of this report for use in this case and the judge may set a hearing the judge may say fine and the judge may say the accompanying report is non-public pursuant to statute <laughs> Your Honor, it's it's very simple, and and, and okay. Mr. Babiers could have obviated this eighteen months ago. And then but the he court, keeps, okay, and the court made a determination. The probate court would have made a determination whether or not yeah. they were. Okay, so yeah. 
you know, and but, let, let me go I, beyond that. Can I just, can I just no, finish? I got some questions. Okay. No, right. no, oh, no. You're not going to finish my argument I, I, then? Okay. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. I have okay. questions in order okay. for my, right. to, myself to be informed okay. to make a decision. You okay. do want me to make a decision, do you not? I do. I want you to say, okay. rule in favor Thank of you. me. Okay, so that being said, we're here because Rivergate is saying Miss Bouchard owes the bill, right? Is that I'm trying to like I said, I'm trying to get the big picture. Isn't that it, Mr. Babiars? Is that why you yes, filed the complaint? That, that's that's the that's the principal complaint, but then uh, she filed a counterclaim alleging that um, Miss Bouchard was being held prisoner against her will. Okay, so you know what? Oh, stop, 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 stop. Hold on, hold on. Help is that stop with the right? hyperbole. Shh. That's in answer to interrogatories, when she, when you finally, when she finally answered our interrogatories per your order, she had to be ordered to, she said, Miss Enscott is going to testify regarding uh, Miss Bouchard's mental and emotional health. Your Honor, this is not a motion for reconsideration on your, the entry okay. of your order. Wait, let me stop right there. You said that in the, and like I said, because I, I got a thousand cases, I don't remember everything. But did you say, Mr. Babby, I said in her answers to interrogatories, she said that, who was that again? That uh, Her expert, Dr. N. Scott, is going to uh, offer testimony regarding her, her mental and emotional health or words to that effect. And Your Honor, if, if I may re re remind you, Your Honor, this is a motion to dis uh, dismiss based on her failure to, to follow your court's order. When you ordered her to produce Dr. N. Scott's report, she filed a motion for reconsideration and she raised these very same issues. The issue she's saying is, that this probate statute makes this report confidential. We briefed that issue. Well, to go back further, Your Honor, when we did our original motion to preclude, you ordered her to produce the Beaumont records, you ordered her to produce the Guardian Health records, but you gave her additional time to brief the issue of whether this statute granted uh, privacy or confidentiality to the probate court. You get you let her brief that issue and you let us brief that issue and you already ruled on it. You said that the, the ruling of the, the circuit court supersedes uh, any confidentiality, confidentiality issue in the probate court. And you found that because her mental health has been placed at issue in this case, we were entitled to that expert report. She's trying to relitigate. This is she's arguing a motion to reconsideration. She's not responding to my motion to dismiss. And your honor, it's easy for her to say. Oh, and by the way, your honor, the statute that she cites specifically says I'm entitled to that report. The That's people who filed the petition. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The, the people who filed the petition and the petitioner are entitled to that report. Rivergate filed a petition. I'm the attorney yeah. for Rivergate. Per the statute itself. I'm entitled okay. to that report. You, and it's not well, my okay, obligation. Excuse me. Excuse me. Why didn't? And I'm just asking because I'm trying to figure out, Mr. Babias, why didn't you get the, a copy of the report in probate court? Because it's her obligation to uh, to comply with your orders. It's no, not no, 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 no. That's not. That's not. Listen to me. You were in probate court, were you not? We, uh, no, you, I, the, the counsel had never been retained. I was not retained until months after the probate hearing. But so no, I was not involved in the case at that time. Okay, because what I'm saying is, uh, that's why I wanted to hear the language, because it says, you know, the, the petitioner, um, the, I can't remember the language, but it was I'm a person. To read it again. Just read the who's entitled to it. And that's yeah. why I asked you, were you a petitioner? Because if you were a petitioner, then you should have been entitled to it under um, the probate court. But, but Miss, uh, Miss, Miss, Francis, when you answered the interrogatories indicating that you were going to use Dr. Encott as an expert, the report is called into question. That's when you open Pandora. And I don't know if I said may, this. I, 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 I may, I, if I may respond to that, Your Honor. Okay. I directly. The initial, um, the initial uh, disclosures stated correctly that she was simply an expert on geriatric psychiatry, uh, psychology, um, something, something, something. She was just a general expert on those topics, capacity in general. Now, when the, uh, when the, by the time um, the responses to the interrogatories were provided, it was very clear to me that Mr. Babiars and Rivergate were going to try to relitigate capacity. Now, 
if they're going to try to relitigate capacity, and if this court is going to allow them to relitigate capacity, then he can respond to, can be a rebuttal witness to anything they wish to put into evidence. Now, maybe it wasn't artfully stated, but in the initial disclosures, we did say that her testimony was to be general on those subjects and that she was just a, she's just an expert because she does that all the time. I know her because I, pro, I practice in probate. She practices in probate. It was Rivergate that made it very clear that they were going to place her capacity at issue, which is when I began to argue, Your Honor, that you may not relitigate her capacity in this court. If you want to relitigate her capacity, you have to go to probate court because the statute 700.1302 subsection C says that the question of capacity must and only be determined exclusively by the probate court. So it's one of those carve outs, right, in our one court of justice. And your honor is a general court of of jurisdiction, but the statute specifically carves, carves out the question of guardianship matters that must be exclusively determined by the probate court. And everything I've cited to you today says that. And on top of that, your honor, Mr. Babiars has for 18 months, as he says, has represented Rivergate and has not done the simplest thing to go to that probate court and file a one-page petition and say, may I have this report? That's and you know true. why, and you, excuse me, and you know why, Your Honor, because there's probability that the probate court is going to say no. Your Honor, okay. the situation... I didn't know of Dr. N. Scott's existence until she finally answered our derogatories. That's not true. Oh, no, 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 no. Stop, stop, no. stop, 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 please, honor, please, please. Is, okay. This lady is saying I had 18 months to, to, to go to the probate court. That's not true. I didn't know of Emily S. Scott's existence until she answered our interrogatories. Once she answered our interrogatories, I then subpoenaed Dr. N. Scott's records. Instead of uh, authorizing the release, she cited this obscure statute that you've already ruled on. And Your Honor, that statute itself says I'm entitled to the records. And Your no. Honor, no, we, I, we have every right to re relitigate her mental health because she's put her mental health at issue by filing this lawsuit. Um, this lady uh, you know, was clearly no. di diagnosed at Beaumont Hospital. The doctor said she could not live alone. She had mental health issues. She came to our facility, and uh, the psychologist and the physician both determined that she was not uh, mentally competent. Now, how did the, how, why, was the, why was the petition dismissed? Because the doctor and psychologist didn't get notice of the hearing. That's why. That doesn't mean she's not mentally incapacitated. She's clearly mentally incapacitated. That's the issue in this case. And okay, why is but, it? Your Honor, yeah. ask yourself this. Why is it she doesn't want that report released? Maybe... Because Dr. Enscott concluded that this lady is delusional. Mm -hmm. Why is she, and Your Honor, if I had gone to the probate court and filed a petition that she suggests, she would have opposed it just the way she's opposed everything in this case. That's what she does, Your Honor. She obstructs and she engages in vexatious discovery. Please, But you know what? But, oh, oh, but, oh. but let, me, let me tell you. The, the thing is, is that in um, discovery, discovery is open and if you put her at issue dr Enkai, at issue then it's 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 her she can't pick out what's in her record you put dr Enkai um at issue miss francis you can't say no. i'm gonna pull out the report no your honor i did not i named her as an expert witness in no that's not fair and do not allow mr babiars to change the record here okay he allowed discovery to close without deposing her without issuing any interrogatories to her, without going to the probate court and asking for anything. He did that. He's the one that has obstructed or just failed 
outright failed to Your conduct Honor, I, I his discovery. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on, Mr. Babbitt. Wait a minute. Hold on, Mr. Babbitt. Hold on, Mr. Babbitt. I said hold interrogatories. On. Who is your expert and what are okay. her opinions? Uh, what are the basic right. hold, okay. okay, hold this on, Mr. is lying to you again. Hold on. Okay, hold on, Mr. Babbitt. Stop Babier. lying. Okay, I am, hold I am, on, Mr. Babbitt. Hold no, on. No, you are. no, Your Honor, I am now absolutely apoplectic with Mr. Babbitt's bad conduct before this court, and I will take it up with okay. the state bar. Okay. It's but wrong, the, Your Honor. But the thing is, the oh, stop, 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 stop. Would you all, don't talk to each bar. other. Hello, don't talk to each other, talk to me. Now, see, the thing is, Miss Miss Franzese, this is, a, this is a totally different court. You put Dr. Uh, S. X. NCOTS, um into issue when you said she was going to be an, the expert and they subpoenaed her records. You can't. You yes, have to, you're you right, have Your to, Honor. Your you Honor, have to you're right. They did. They they did subpoena Dr. Escott. Dr. Escott is not my client. Dr. Escott is an independent third party who did not provide medical treatment for my client. So my Listen, client. Whoa, stop. Your Honor, they did not pursue their subpoena during discovery. Yes, I did. They, I filed no. a motion. That's okay, rule. stop, stop, stop. Hold on. No. Okay. He hold, filed stop, a, stop, stop. Both of no. you stop. Stop. He filed a motion stop. To hold on, hold on. I got a question. Mr. Um, Babiaris, what happened with the subpoena? She refused to sign an authorization for the release of Dr. Yeah. Scott's records. So I because filed they're not medical said, records. I, I said, Your Honor, if she's not going to authorize the release of the records, uh, please enter an order precluding her from offering any documentary or testimonial evidence. And instead of doing that, you ordered her to sign an authorization, which she refuses to do to this day, Your Honor. Okay, um, okay, okay, fine. So the, the, uh, let me go through. In terms of uh, what, what, what we're going to do, Miss um, Ms. Francie, she if you don't produce, um, sign the authorization, Dr. Incott will not, was in Scott will not be able to testify. She will be precluded. Fine, that's she'll fine, be, Your Honor. You'll be precluded. So, That's Mr. Mr. Babiar is uh, preparing order. Your Honor, you ordered her to produce those on October 31st. Yeah. Five months have gone by. She still hasn't produced them. Yeah. She's going to file another motion for reconsideration. No, I'm not. You're I, I actually one. stipulate, Your does. Honor. I stipulate. Okay, stop, stop. Come on. Constructive discovery. Okay, but, but the thing is, as a court, you know, I like I say, in terms of the court, there's a lesser um, sanction here in terms of the dean factors. And and as opposed to dis dismissing the, the case, okay, was there violation of willful or accidental? The, it was not, I don't think it was willful or accidental. She had she had what she felt was her basis for it. Uh, the party's refusal, uh, history of refusing, she has refused. Whether or not it's prejudicial, I'm not 100% certain. Um, and then of course there was actual notice. The history is there, but the the and then the degree of compliance um, and the lesser sanction and in terms of dean factors there is a lesser sanction here dr n scott will not be able to testify in any way shape form or fashion relative to this 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 action so it's in lieu of dismissing the case and i don't know mr um mr babiars i i can't and i'm not going to presuppose to uh, get into either of your um, litigation tactics and whether this is something that, you know, ultimately uh, Miss Francis wanted. I, I don't know that. And I'm not going to get into supposing that. But the fact of the matter remains is that Dr. N. Scott will not be able to, to testify. And um, I don't know, in discoveries, and Miss Miss Francis' discovery is closed. So you cannot get another expert unless you get leave of the court. I understand, so, Your Honor. I'll prepare the order. Thank you, Mr. Babiars. Your Honor, how much time does she have to produce uh, Dr. N. Scott's uh, report? I'm I'm not producing it. I'm going to uh, I, I'm the with, court I'm... issued an order, and I am going to write up uh, with your with your Honor's permission an order that says the motion is dismissed and Miss and Dr. Escott may not testify in this action. Is that At sufficient? All. At, At all. all. And At like all. I, and like I said, I don't know. And like I said, I'm not presupposing, Mr. Babiars in terms of what's the undercurrent here. I, I'm not going to get into that, but the court can issue a lesser um, sanction here. And the lesser sanction is to totally preclude her from, from testifying. And like I said, I'm not getting into what's going to happen down the road. 
Very well, Your Honor. Thank you. So, and, Your Honor, I'll... Your Honor, may I also, um, in the same order, uh, withdraw my motion for stay? It won't be necessary if Your Honor is just precluding yes. her. Yeah. Okay. So three things. The motion is just the motion to dismiss is denied. Uh, Dr. Escott may not is precluded from testifying at all in the action, and the motion for stay is withdrawn. Right. And wait, hold on. Let me see where we are with this case because I know we've been going around the block with this for um, some time. Now, give me one second. You all have a settlement conference on April the 9th at 11.15 via mm -hmm. Zoom. Thank you, Your Honor. You said that at the last April 9th at what time, Your Honor? 11.15 via Zoom. Would you like me to put that in the court in the order as well, Your Honor? You can. That's perfectly fine. Okay. And we'll see you all then. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you, Your Honor. Honor. I appreciate your time. Thank you. It must You're have welcome. been a long morning to end on this one. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Babiers, do you want me to remove you? Or okay, you got it? I'm sorry, I didn't hear do, you. Do right? you want me to remove you from the Zoom or do you have it? Do you want me to remove you? Oh, yes. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, thank you.